body parts. It's the Clint Eastwood paperback episode. Get ready for some wild and wooly gunfights, gun smoke, and horse apples. All right, everybody, here we go. This is the Clint Eastwood paperback episode I promised you, and this, of course, is the famous man with no name Colt 45 that I've shown you in several previous episodes, so I'll show you uh, that maybe later on when we're shooting it out back in target shooting. We'll get to that later. So Clint Eastwood paperbacks. Those are paperbacks, um, novelizations based upon his films or with his image on them. And we're going to go right back in time to Rawhide. I have some better photos of these at the end. Here is the uh, Frank C. Robertson uh, novelization from the television show Rawhide going way back. Clint Eastwood has been on paperbacks that long. It's really cool um, to find these and to collect them and to... Um, and obviously to read them. They're fun to read. I talked about some of the other Rawhide books in my episode on Whitman Western, so be sure to check that out. So Rawhide is the earliest paperback going back, and then we have the famous uh, Spaghetti Westerns, the Sergio Leone um, Man With No Name films themselves. A Fistful of Dollars was the first novelization, and we're gonna have this um, Again, a better, a better uh, copy of that showing you. This was written by Frank Chandler. It's not bad. Um, the ones by Joe Millard are better. But the first one, a Fistful of Dollars, was written by Frank Chandler. And here is, this is actually the UK edition, I believe. I bought this on eBay recently. It took me a long time to get it. Not an easy book to find. Uh, then we have a few dollars more, for a few dollars more. This is where Joe Millard comes into it. I've talked about Joe Millard in other episodes. He was an excellent writer of Westerns. So if you see anything written by Joe Millard, including this, find it, read it. You'll really enjoy it, especially if you love Westerns. Clint Eastwood, paperbacks. Collecting Clint Eastwood, one of the great film actors of our time. And then we have another Joe Millard, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, The Famous. Perhaps the best of the three. Most people consider it the best of the three. Um, I like all three, but uh, here is The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly by Joe Millard. Great little book. Tough, tight, just like the movie. And that, you know, this became a series. Uh, I don't quite have them all, but the Man With No Name books were popular enough that they generated a series with um, with uh, some of these publishers. And who is the publisher? So then, uh, these are out of order, too, by the way, and I don't quite have them all. This was uh, award books. Here's the Million Dollar Blood Hunt, also by Joe Millard. These are fairly easy to find. Um, that first one uh, by Chandler is that's the tough one to find. Um, but the Million Dollar Blood Hunt by Joe Millard again. It's Joe Millard, so you know it's a good book. And then we have a coffin full of dollars. This was really <laughs> what a great title that is. Too bad they didn't make a movie with that title, huh? A coffin full of dollars by Joe Millard, Clint Eastwood. The Man with No Name. Fun, fun books to read and collect. And here's another one. Um, this is written by Brian Fox, A Dollar to Die For. That's a dog-eared copy uh, I found somewhere. It might have been on eBay, too. Um, these Man with No Name paperbacks are becoming harder and harder to find. So if you see them on eBay and they're affordable, or if you see them in thrift shops, you should buy them. Uh, I'd love to see that entire series reprinted. Then we get to um, a paperback um, that is one of 1968, one of Eastwood's best films, Hang 'em High. And this includes an uh, image from the uh, film on the cover. And this was with, with Inger Stevens. And this was written by who? Leonard Freeman and Mel Goldberg. I think they were the screenwriters on this. I'm not sure. Let's take a look. Um, I'm not really sure. Uh, how they came to write it, but it was written by Leonard Freeman and Mel Goldberg. It's not a bad little book. Really good book to have if you're an Eastwood paperback collector. And then we have High Plains Drifter, another classic Eastwood. This is Ernest Tidyman wrote this, and this is one of the iconic Eastwood films. Great movie. And then I have, are you surprised? I have two copies of Pale Rider by Alan Dean Foster. This was the novelization. I'm not quite sure how I ended up with two copies of that but there we go one of eastwood's later westerns and then we're going to get to 
Dirty Harry. Now, in Dirty Harry, I'm sure you all know, uh, Clint Eastwood is using the Smith & Wesson Model 29 in 44 Magnum. This is the Smith & Wesson Model 19 in 357 Magnum. 357 is one of my preferred calibers. Um, I'll show you a little video later on. I'll shoot this, uh, and you can see how it handles. This is an iconic um, gun, really. Uh, Eastwood really increased the sales on this one when he uh, picked that up in Dirty Harry and carried it throughout. So just wanted to show you that. I'll show you more of that perhaps in a different episode later. So the Dirty Harry paperbacks are fascinating. So we have, we have Dirty Harry, which was uh, based on the screenplay by Harriet. Harry Julian Fink and R.M. Fink and Dean Reisner and Philip Rock wrote the novelization for the Dirty Harry paperback. Still fairly easy to get. It's that first spaghetti western for a fistful of dollars that is the hard one to find in really good condition. Magnum Force. Um, this is Mel Valley did the um, novelization on Magnum Force for Clint Eastwood. And there is the iconic... Smith & Wesson Model 29. I own the 19. I don't have the 29. Uh, on the back there, you have the gun itself. And, of course, prominently displayed in the cover artwork. In fact, you can take a look here. Also on Dirty Harry, you have the Model 29 prominently displayed on both paperbacks. The Smith & Wesson models are, the revolvers are really fun to shoot. And then I have um, Sudden Impact by Joseph C. Stinson, which was another Dirty Harry film. Um, still photographed from the series on the cover there. And then I have... All right, so then Dirty Harry was such a popular character that there was a series, and I have the first four of those. There were more. I didn't... You know, they, they came, became kind of pedantic after a while. Um, but Dirty Harry number one, which was by Dane Hartman. I don't know if that was a pseudonym or not, probably. Um, uh, Duel for Cannons, Dirty Harry, the series, and then we had Dirty Harry 2, Death on the Docks. Once again, he is holding the iconic Smith & Wesson Model 29. And then we have number three, The Long Death, all by Dane Hartman. I'll have to look that up. Uh, I think that was a pseudonym or a pen name, Dirty Harry 4, The Mexico Kill, right here. So, Clint Eastwood paperbacks, fun stuff to read. And then there's some related films, Every Which Way But Loose, which was by who? A novel by Jeremy Joe Kronzberg. And then The Gauntlet, which is a novel by Michael Butler and Dennis Shirak. And The Gauntlet was actually a film you don't see very often. They don't show it very often. It was, I thought it was a great movie. Um, Paint Your Wagon which was with Lee Marvin. And of course, they have Lee Marvin on the back and a really funny, a really funny still uh, from the film. I got flies flying around here. We were cleaning fish. Um, this was by George Scullin, who did the novelization on this. And then we have, I have two Thunderbolt and Lightfoots, which is a great movie, Clint Eastwood. I don't know how I ended up with two. Michael Cimino. Uh, wrote the screenplay, and the novelization is by Joe Millard. So we're going to end with Joe Millard, one of the great underrated novelization writers uh, in film and Western history. Fun stuff to read. Clint Eastwood all the way. How many did I fire? Was it five or six? So I'll show you some uh, shooting videos a little bit later. In the meantime, keep your powder dry. You feel lucky, punk? Yeah. <laughs> Hang on to it. <laughs> you can see the double action. Was that five or six? That was six.